Speaker. Right Honourable Winston Peters. Mr Speaker, New Zealand First wishes to thank all of the hard-working people in Parliament who make this place tick for what they contribute to our nation and to our democracy. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and also to your assistance for your efforts to uh, ensure this place runs fairly, or to be more accurate, and to quote Mr Joyce, pretty fairly. <laughs> thank you also uh, to your staff, particularly the clerk and her office, select committee staff, our fantastic library researchers, the messengers, the cleaners, who, by the way, still need a fair rise, the travel office, Copperfield staff, the IT gurus, parliamentary security, the Hansard staff, to all of you, a happy Christmas. Thanks also to my dear friends in the press gallery. <laughs> we know that you play a very fundamental role in our parliamentary democracy, and sadly it's become increasingly clear to us that the under-resourcing of those in the gallery by their respective organisations is having a negative impact on their ability to report the news. As this uh, newfound obsession with speed, haste makes waste, and thoughtful consideration is better than a breaking news banner, but we know where the blame lies. To our New Zealand First staffers in Wellington and out around the country, and to all of our supporters, thank you for a great year. Yeah. With a fraction of the money these other parties had, a bare fraction of what they had, we increased our vote by almost 62,000 and had the election been in November, when it should have been had, it would have been all over Rover. <laughs> there is an ominous warning for some of you over there in that last statement. Now, we've had a great year, Mr Speaker. The question now becomes, why are we rising now? Why, when there's zero hours for some people in contracts, and the 90-day exploratory period, and the lack of smoker, would this parliament have every other party but New Zealand First want to go and have an early holiday? Shocking. They should be here to handle the crisis that this country faces. Why overnight the OEDC, the OECD irrefutably pointed to the disparities between the wealth and the poor in this country. You know, the only thing we've got in surplus right now in this country is political dishonesty. Mr English has been holding out for a surplus. He says it's been imminent for years. All he's ever delivered, of course, is deficit after deficit after deficit. And what we want, Mr English, and the National Party in 2015, which is going to be a seriously tough year, all the omens are there, is the unadulterated plain truth about the state of the economy. Not an on again, off again, on again, off again deficit that we've had the last six years. And as for the growth rate, every forecast has it severely down and it's worsening with the latest forecast from Fonterra. Now, what attention to the deficit does is draw the public's attention away from some of the really scary numbers, as I said. $150 billion of national debt and our debt as a government up over six times to $65 billion. It reminds me of those lines from a Dusty Springfield song which he said, a thinking, a hoping and a dreaming and a praying, I think it went. Yeah, a thinking and a hoping and a wishing and a praying. On and on. No plan at all. And out in Business New Zealand, there are a whole lot of people who think this government has no plan. Because if we knew what it was, we wouldn't have so many times the government trying to defend it. Tracking up the figures around the deficit surplus in successive budgets and fiscal updates has become an art form for this government. And before the election, all that mattered to Mr English was to claim a surplus in 2014-15. There is no surplus. And as soon as this House rises, he's going to go on trying to soften people and blame everybody else but their own claim to be good financial managers. They're not. They're appalling. And if we were in government borrowing six times what we, our borrowing rate was in 2008, they'd be over there screaming blue murder. But of course, it's always been with national of recent times, one rule for them and a different rule for everybody else. Look at their expenditure, personal, staff. They screamed about the number of civil servants we had and now we've got more. And Mr Key, well he's got, when Keith Hollick used to have five people in his office, Mr Key's got 55. Hollyoak had five, He's got 55, and then bodyguards everywhere as well, like some sort of South American drug lord. <laughs> bodyguards everywhere. Maybe it makes him feel great and important. And then we've got 
their boast of massive immigration being good for New Zealand. Massive housing, oh, here we go again. For that junior, wet behind the ears, been here five minutes, here we go, right? All the way to the next election. Because we've got 50, 46, rather, 47,000 net gain right now, mainly going to Auckland, and you've got Mr. English and others talking about consents. Oh, we've got 11,000 consents. You better try to live in a consent. <laughs> Any bathrooms in a consent? Any kitchen, bedroom? No. It's a joke. And we should be here all the way to Christmas Eve to give it our belated attention. Leastways, that's what New Zealand First says. And we're happy to do the hours. The yards. Because we know what poverty feels and tastes like. And that's why we understand the condition now of so many New Zealanders. Look at today's New Zealand Herald. All these people were surveyed by Massey University and Westpac, and a mass majority of them said they had no hope as renters of ever owning their own home. I can recall this great country when, when we were number one in the world, when we took people from dirt floors and tents and poverty to make us the highest home ownership country in the whole wide world. And nationals proud most of the time under Holyoke was a property-owned democracy. These people here don't care. I'm in the boat, Jack. Too bad for you. Pull up the ladder. We're off. Ah, oh, yes. But I tell you, you nervous backbenchers, I hope you enjoy it because it's not going to be very long-lived. I don't think you're going to make the 2017 election. I don't think you're going to make it. And I think there's going to be massive protests when people realise the promises of growth were so fragile as to be a mirage. It's all in today's paper. We call for a house and land register. Oh no, that's not necessary. Except that if you look at today's paper again, at today's paper, oh, xenophobia they call it. Oh, yes, I can recall when New Zealand first was referring to the housing crisis, the massive immigration, and what's going on in Auckland, and every other party shouted racism and xenophobia. Now they want to pick all the low-flying apples. All the low-hanging apples. Well, yes, they do. Oh, we might have a concern because right now we discover that the OIO is working on a register of foreign ownership of New Zealand. Wow. Wow. Did he know that, the backbencher over there, smiling? No. Did Mr. Bishop know about it? No. Oh, no, he smiles, he smiles at two flies going up the wall. <laughs> Did his Prime Minister know? No, he didn't know. It's all in this article. Mind, this is the Prime Minister who said this. Also, the New Zealand Herald, November 20. He said this, but when it came to assess the sale of the Clayfar farms to Shanghai Pension, not a single other farm could be found with Chinese ownership. What planet is this Prime Minister on? Look, the man up there yawning from Rodney, he knows there's a whole lot of his area. That one woman knows four farms up there. And here's the Prime Minister bulldusting around the country saying it doesn't exist. Well, we're going to make sure that every gets, everybody in 2015 gets to find out who is telling the truth all along. And our message to those people going to Christmas, and it'll be very grim for a lot of people, is I know it's difficult, but hang on, because New Zealand First is on a dramatic rise, the fastest growing in this party in this country, and help is on its way. Help is on its way. The sad thing, of course, is this. We are off to war. This country, as soon as this house rises, will find out that we're off to war, having never... I know it's rubbish. I'll get around to that member, especially very later. But let me tell you this, we're off to war, and she will never apologise next year when it happens, and they have never learned anything from history. Never learned a thing from it. I was in the cabinet in 1991, and the only cabinet minister opposed that one. And then we had the second engagement. Thank God the Labour Party wouldn't go. But no, no, these new green wet behind the ears people are off to the Middle East one more time, having never learnt a lesson from history. Even going down the years, the words of Alexander the Great would have told them, stay away from it. But it doesn't help them. And so I want to say to those people around this country, I hope they have a better two, uh, 2015. But the warning is, it's going to be very, very difficult. I want to close by saying, Mr Speaker, that being the only party that believes in traditional values, have a happy Christmas. 
So be safe on the roads. Make sure you use your life jackets, especially those ones over there can't swim. <laughs> and a better new year. Thank you.